Did you wish there was a way to consolidate your Echo Dot with your Amazon Fire TV stick? Well, guess what? There is such a product. Hello, I am Wanderer001, and this is my review of the Fire TV Cube second gen. If you are watching this at the end of 2022, there is a new Fire Cube that is coming out. However, this one will be heavily discounted, and if you could live with some of the items that this one does not have, that the new one has, uh, you'll be able to save yourself quite a bit of money because this is going to be heavily discounted. So what do you get with the second gen Amazon Fire TV Cube here? Well, you get a internal quad core processor, which is going to help this in presenting 4K HD TV with 16 gigs of internal storage for all of those applications that you'll be downloading to it, as well as two gigs of memory allowing it to be snappy enough that you're really not gonna notice any screen lag while you're moving through the user interface. Some other perks that you still get with the second gen Fire TV Cube is Dolby Vision HD, Dolby Atmos, and as I've said, that 4K resolution at 2160p. Now, I will have listed below the full specifications for this, all the internals and stuff that you're gonna care about, but let's actually take a look at the hardware. Well, you have been staring at the top of the Echo Cube. Here you can see there are little perforations in there, and those are eight far-field microphones. This allows the Amazon Echo Cube here to hear you no matter where you have this place. Also, it allows it that even though it's close to your TV, because that's the point of this, is that it's close to your TV, that it will still hear you. At the top, we have our plus for volume up, volume down, muting, and then the trigger if you don't want to use the Alexei trigger phrase, which I will be saying oddly to try and save you if you have any other Amazon Echo devices. On the front here, this is an LED light strip that will turn blue when the Fire Cube is triggered. The rest of the cube is this really, and I mean really shiny plastic. So that is going to pick up fingerprints and scratches rather easily. And the cube itself is a cube and these are very, very sharp edges. So if you have animals that like to jump up on stuff and knock stuff down, uh, this could be dangerous. Or if you're just clumsy and happen to hit your head on it or drop it on your foot or have an animal that likes to smack at things, just know these edges are really, really sharp. Coming around to the back, this is actually the business end of the Fire TV Cube. Here we have a micro USB import for a peripheral, which we'll talk about a little later. Here we have the infrared extender plug, which we'll talk about a little later. HDMI port right here so that you can hook this up to your TV. Amazon does not include an HDMI cable with this, but I guess they're kind of figuring that you already have one lying around but uh, I wish they would have at least put an Amazon basic one in here. And then over here is our power input supply. On the bottom of the device, four rubber feeties that help keep this off the surface that it's on, because right here you have your speaker, which is a 1.644 millimeter speaker. So you're gonna hear decent sound from the Fire TV cube here. Now keep in mind that is only gonna activate when your TV or soundbar is not on. If you have your TV or soundbar on, it will default to using them instead of the cube. So the speaker itself doesn't have to be great, especially if this is a device that's going to be utilized with a TV set. The speaker itself will allow you to hear notifications or quick phrases. So if you ask your Alex A what the weather is and the TV's off, you'll be able to hear it through there without any issues. But the rest of the time, you're primarily gonna be using this with a TV set. Now I had mentioned some of the cables that you do not get with the Fire Cube here, let's actually take a quick look at what you do get with the Cube that you need to operate it as well as to set it up. For starters, here is your five foot power supply, dedicated in, so no USB here, goes right into the back of the Fire Cube. Next, we have the IR extender. So if you happen to be in a location where the Cube cannot get an IR signal to your TV or your soundbar, you have this infrared extender which plugs into the back right there and will power this, allowing IR to make it to those hard to reach places. And then last but not least, if you wanna have a hard line connection, instead of using the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi that this uses, you can hardwire yourself via ethernet using this adapter and the micro USB to the micro USB on the back. So if you were close enough to where you could hardwire it, this would be how you could do that. Just because you have the option to hardwire it 
via the adapter does not mean that the internal Wi-Fi is a slouch. In fact, when I was using this and testing it, I was using it strictly over Wi-Fi. And part of that is because of the way I was prompted to set this up. So let's take a quick look at what setup for the Fire TV Cube second generation was like. This will be set up for the Fire TV Cube, which is located right there. I currently just have the HDMI cable plugged into the back of it. All right, we have supplied it with power. You could see it's flashing on. Might be a little difficult to see, but uh, the cube itself is blue now. And then I swapped over to the HDMI channel that has the fire plugged into it now. And it wants us to press the start button or the play button on the remote. After which I'm going to use the selection or the OK in the middle for English. And because this isn't the first fire device that I've had, my network picked it up automatically. Right there it is showing my name, so who is this going to be for? And we're just gonna select yes, it's for me. And because I reviewed at one time the Fire Stick over there, I can restore those settings to this new Fire device. So I'm gonna say yes, restore. I would like to see what that is. And there it goes, Brian's Fire TV Stick. We're gonna select yes, and it's gonna restore. So parental controls, this is a big thing that I've thought about more recently with some streaming services and streaming devices. I do not have children in my house, so I'm going to select no parental controls. I can select some streaming services, so let's hit get started. We'll add a couple. I'll do Apple TV, Paramount, Paramount. Do I have any cable stuff? I do not. Do I have any sports packages? I do not. Which featured services would you like? Well, yeah, we'll add Tubi. And that's it. And we're gonna hit the play pause to continue. Following will be added to the home screen. I will select finish. And we can enable the Alex A control on our device. So we're gonna say, sure, continue. And selecting next. I do use a sound bar. You can see it right there. That's the Sonos Arc right there. All right, so they're gonna turn it on and off. Turning your TV off. This may take a minute. Please wait. So it says turning your TV off, please wait. And it did. Press fast forward on your Fire TV oh. Cube remote. Turning your TV back on. Fast forward. Take a minute. Fast forward. Wait. Not play pause. I was hitting the wrong button. That was on me. And there we go. TV's turning back on. And we're back. Can now turn on and off the TV. Gonna hit next. During the next step, it'll play some music. So it's gonna try and do the sound bar. Yes, it muted. So, did not need the optical extender. I was just being impatient and not reading correctly. Firecube is all set up. And there we're brought to our, our screen. So let's test. Alexa, cancel. Alexa, turn off my TV. Nice. There you saw, if you actually do things correctly, setup process for this is not terrible at all. Any Amazon product is going to be like that, especially if you already have an Amazon account. Now, because this Fire TV Cube is not just an Amazon Echo device, it is also an Amazon Fire TV device. Well, yes, you can control your Amazon Fire TV with this using your voice. However, there also is an included remote in case you don't wanna to have to use your voice. So in the case, let's take a quick look at the Amazon Fire TV remote for our Amazon Fire TV Cube second gen. Up here at the top, you can see that is a microphone because right there, that is your vocal search or their Alex A searching. You press and hold that and you'll be able to search or operate your cube using the remote in case the cube is too far out of earshot. And keep in mind, because you are keeping this closer to a speaker, because it's by your TV, you might need to use this because the audio from your TV is drowning out your audio command. So this is actually fairly useful. Here we have our power button. This will allow us to turn on and off your TV set, not the Amazon Fire Cube, but your TV. Here we have a directional D-pad, which is cleverly hidden behind this circle option right here. We have our OK or select option right there in the middle. Simply click on that. It is not a touch enabled anything, it's just a button. Next, we come back to our 30 second back. This is our home, brings us back to the home page. Here we have a hamburger button, extra options on some screens. It is not used on every screen, but you can tap on it to get extra options. Here we have our fast, our rewind, play pause, fast forward. And then a godsend on any remote that you're getting nowadays, you have a mute button, volume controls, which can control a soundbar, as you saw during setup, and a live TV button. So if you happen to have 
live TV channels on your Amazon device, this will bring you right to them in a nice aggregated format. So if you've got something like Pluto TV and Amazon TV, this button helps to group them all together. And then right here we have our dedicated who paid the most to be on the remote buttons. Can't change them, they're hard coded. That will forever be Amazon Prime, go figure. Netflix, Disney Plus, and Hulu. Can't change that, but it's kind of standard on a lot of remotes now. You have the Fire TV branding right there. And if we flip our remote over, it's really thin and that is partially due to the fact that it uses two AAA batteries down the center there. There's a little finger divot there, so while you're holding it, you have a place to kind of nestle your finger in. Up here, this is your IR blaster. Again, that's going to be how you interact with the TV as the remote itself talks to your Fire Cube via Bluetooth. The only downfall to the remote is it is a little slippery. You can see just from me holding it, it does look like it gets a little sweaty. Uh, most remotes are going to be like that. It's a fault that I have with most of them. I wish that it was a little more tactile, but I get it, it wouldn't be as sleek and nice to look at if they did that. Now, with this being an Amazon Fire device, not just an Amazon Echo device, that means, well, guess what? You're gonna be able to watch stuff through this. You'll be able to watch your Amazon Prime. You'll be able to watch your Netflix all through this cube. It is not just a device that you talk to and ask questions. You can use the Fire Cube to turn your TV on, to lower the volume. But that's all done through the user interface for the Amazon Fire Cube here. So let's take a look at what that actually looks like. This will be the apps portion for the Amazon Echo Cube. Uh, for starters, I will say the Echo Cube does not seem to like capture cards, which is why we're doing this old school with the remote and camera pointed at the TV. Sorry about that, it is what it is. So starting off when we first land on our Amazon page here, you're gonna notice something. If you have any other Amazon Fire Stick related products, this menu system is going to look very similar and that's because, well, in essence, your Echo Cube has the Amazon Fire Smarts built right into it. So we're gonna land on the home page, which is where we are. It's gonna have this banner image right here, letting you know, hey, these are things that are going on. You can cycle through them, and this is an ad that just will never go away. Right here we have our recent, so right now you can see my recent app is actually Netflix. And down here we have all of my apps, so Netflix, Prime, all, all of these things. We've got our sponsor right here. This is around the Halloween holiday, so they are heavily promoting Disney Plus and the new Hocus Pocus movie. Here we have Prime Originals, lots of things to look at, Prime Movies, Prime Comedy, Prime Action, you, you get the idea. They're really pushing the Prime stuff. And then here we have Netflix Recommends. This is based on whoever was last watching Netflix. So in my case, it was me. So it's recommending Cobra Kai as the first thing since that is actually what I was watching. Now you have On Now. This is actually going to be a way to pull in live feeds. So whatever applications you have on here that are live, such as Pluto, Freebie, things like that, it will pull and aggregate those all in one place. And here we have to be recommends, recommended by your apps, sponsored apps. Really, it's, it's aggregating all of these sources and putting them in one place so that you can see them. Here we got sponsored for the week, prime, recommended apps. And I'm, I'm going all the way to the bottom of this because I wanna show you, once I get to the bottom, if I select the back arrow on my remote, it actually brings me all the way up to the top of the menu, which is what I prefer in a system like this. Now, because this is an Amazon Echo device, you can either hold down the blue Amazon Alex A portion of your remote, or you can tell the Echo Cube to launch any channel. So in this case, I can say, Alexa, open Netflix. So see, I didn't do it fast enough. Oh. There you can see it actually opened up Netflix for me. And I can do that with any of the applications that are on here. Coming back up to our menu, that was our home. If we select over to the left, this is going to be our search function. We can press and hold the voice option on our remote, which is our blue Alex A button, and search for Mark Hamill. And then it's gonna bring up anything that Mark Hamill is in. Gonna go back, and it will do similar if you happen to type it out. We're not going to type it out because that's not good television. Coming across, we have live. This is going to be, again, an aggregate of all of your live services. Coming down, you've got an app, you have an ad, 
then you actually get your featured live apps and you could cycle through these. These are not necessarily ones that I have on my system, but ones that it thinks I would want. Here we have another sponsored ad. And then we move through live sports, breaking news, Pluto TV, which I do have, Tubi, which I have, and these are other channels that you can get that are live or apps that you can put on here. Add Prime Video, and then you've got options specific to live TV. So you've got your channel guide, you have your favorites if you have any favorites, and that's across all of your live TV options. Parental, con parental controls as they apply to just live TV, and then settings. So I'm skipping a lot of these because we're gonna talk about those when we actually get to the settings portion, but here is what the live TV guide looks like. So you can kind of come through here and it gives you a synopsis and over in the corner, it shows you a little bit about what it is. I'm gonna select back and back one more time, brings me back up to the top, which again, I really appreciate. Your videos, this is going to be prime specific. So this is anything on Amazon that you happen to watch or bookmark. Right here, my wife and I went down a rabbit hole of finding really bad movies to watch. And then you have things like Vox Machina mixed in here, but this is all the stuff that we were looking at. Here we have video library. This is shared across my movies anywhere selection because none of these I actually have through Amazon. So this section is showing because of movies anywhere. Here we have another sponsored, but coming down. Prime movies again, Prime originals, Netflix recommended. This page looks very similar to our homepage, but this is just our videos. Moving on, we have free. So this is going to be free for you. You have things like, here's a individual show that is free, and you can come across and look through all the free shows, or you can come down and look at your free apps on Fire TV. And then Pluto recommends, again, because I have that channel, popular free movies, Tubi recommends, which is another channel that I have on here, trending free TV shows, free, free V recently added. And then again, coming all the way through, there's lots of segregated spaces that you can go through to see, hey, what can I watch for free? Coming across, movies. Similarly, we always have this ad right there, which we go past. Prime movies you'll like. Prime movie originals, sponsor. Things to rent, freebie. Prime video cinema, prime member deals. So these aren't free, but you can rent them for cheap. I, again, I like how they aggregate things together to make finding things easier, but sometimes it's over aggregated and it feels like you have to hunt and pick because some things will show up on this screen and this screen. It's, it's a, a mixed bag. Coming across, TV shows. Well, as you might imagine, here we have all of our Amazon related TV shows. We have prime comedy. So again, featuring our Amazon stuff first. Sponsor, prime Amazon original, freebie original, prime kids, prime science fiction, Prime, 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 you, you get the idea. Apps, this is where you can add extra applications to your Amazon Fire Cube. Now you could see spotlighted here, I have Pluto TV, which is already on my Amazon Cube, so I have an open button there. But if I were to come over to something like Travel Go, which isn't yet on here, I will have the option to download it. But it also shows at the bottom here, featured recently on this app. So featured in this app, giving you an idea, hey, these are the things that you can watch, trailers and screenshot. Customers also got the apps of these things, and then customer ratings, information, and so forth. And that's gonna be for every app. And again, it's gonna break it down and bundle it into these groupings. So entertainment, sports, no cable required, Alex A enabled, which means you can use your voice and Alex A to control things like volume up, skip, turn off. That is one thing I really like about the cube. If you give a command to raise the volume on this screen, you'll notice a blue line pops up on the bottom. Alexa, mute. So right there, my sound bar has been muted all through that, the cube. I can also say, Alexa, turn off TV. Alexa, turn on TV. So not only can you use your voice to control things like that, you would be able to say, 
pause or skip ahead, rewind X percent, and it will do that. So that, that's kind of cool. Back up to the top, we come over to our last screen, which is our settings, and then selecting down on the remote brings us into them. Here we have our notifications. I don't currently have any notifications, but if I select my hamburger button in the corner, I can set up settings within the notifications. So I can have do not interrupt, which will hide any notifications while I'm watching something. And then I have options to block or unblock notifications from a specific app. Coming back, we have our networking options. So right now I am actually connected to my IoT network wirelessly, but if I wanted to, I can have the ethernet plugged in or I could select another Wi-Fi connection to, to attach to. Moving on, display and sounds. Here we have screensaver options. So I have current screensaver, which is Amazon collections. I can do daily memories, your photos, recent photos, photo booth, and then it will actually break it down into specific albums that I have on Amazon Photos. So it, it does integrate into that. Here I have display, selecting that. I have video resolution, auto, 1080, 720, match original frame rate, on or off. So you, depending on how adept you are with TV options, you can either choose not to match the frame rate of the original video and override that with other areas, or you can turn on match and let the Echo Cube take care of it for you. Color depth, you have 8-bit, 10-bit, or 12-bit. Color format, auto, RGB, or YCBCR. Don't know what that is, leave it on auto. Calibrate display, which will let you make sure that you're utilizing as much screen real estate as possible. And then dynamic range settings, HDR always, or adaptive. That's display. Now we're going to go to audio. Navigation sound on or off. That's gonna be the clicking slash badoop badoops that you'd be hearing. Surround sound, best available, stereo, always Dolby Digital Plus or always Dolby Digital. Back, advanced audio, volume leveling, as you might imagine, kind of help those explosions quiet down and raise the people's voices while they're talking. And then dialogue enhancer, do you just want people's voices to be enhanced? That's what you would choose for that. And then AV sync tuning, if you're experiencing Issues with your audio and video syncing up, this is what you would select. Enable display mirroring. Well, realistically, if I wanted to mirror something from a Fire tablet, that's where I would do. HDMI CEC device control, which would allow your cube to send information via HDMI instead of IR, which it currently is doing as we speak. Selecting back and over, we have our applications. We have Amazon Photos, which if you have photos, will let you look through your photos. You've got your Silk browser. This is the same browser that the Kindle uses. So this is a very lightweight browser that you can utilize with the cube on your TV. Game Circle. This will allow you to control privacy within your game. Whisper Swing for game. For me, it's on currently because that's how it comes default. App Store. Do we want automatic updates for our apps? Yes or no. External market links. Ask before opening is what's currently set. But you can say don't open or others. In-app purchases, well, you can have that on or off. Manage my subscriptions, on or off. Notifications, on or off. And hide cloud apps. So if something has been offloaded from your device and is relegated to the cloud, if you have this on, you'll see it kind of grayed out and it will let you know that it's in the cloud. But I have that currently turned off because I have plenty of space on my uh, cube. And then you have manage installed applications. And here you can see. I have 10 gigs of pretty much 12 gigs available and there's no external USB, but I can select manage applications. And if I wanted to remove or see specific information about an app, this is where I would come. Next, we have equipment control. Equipment control, automatic video and music. Well, you could turn that off or by request. I have it on automatic. Manage equipment. You can add equipment here, such as live TV, game console, blah, 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 TV. And this will let you determine volume increase based on button push or what you ask for. Increments at a time currently is set for five. Fast forward or rewind will allow you to plus or minus the volume. And then your hamburger button sets the default. Infrared options, adjust TV IR. We're not gonna do that because it's already set up. Power controls, well, this is if your TV does not respond to the IR control, it will delay for 16 seconds before trying again. Power command, toggles on the TV. 
power command repetition, this will manage how many times the IR signal is sent when you're trying to do something. Configure projector if you had one, input switching, so if you want to be able to adjust your input via the cube or the remote that comes with it, and then change TV. Sound bar, if you have it, you've got pretty much the same thing uh, that we had with the TV controls right there. Fire cube, input, sound output. Again, if you have all the cableage for this, you can mess with it there. Advanced settings, volume control devices. So I have it to TV or sound bar. Right now I have it on the sound bar because that's where my TV sound actually comes through. Volume and power buttons, fire remote or fire cube. So you could pick which one you'd like. Power timing, power input, and home button. There's a lot of options, there's a lot of nuances from this menu. And then you have the option to set up your equipment again. I'm not gonna do that, because like I said, I already set up my equipment. I'm not doing that again. Here we have live TV. So we've got favorite channels, manage channels, parental controls, and then the sync source. So parental controls, if I come in here, they're currently off, but I can turn this on, and then I would set a pin code that I would be able to input in order to turn on and off the parental controls. Once I do that, I'll have the ability to limit specific channels and age ratings for content. And then here are the 95 channels, but this is all based on Tubi and Pluto. So it's pulling those all together and displaying them as one, which is one really good thing about the Amazon Fire interface since it pulls in all of that information into one section with your live TV. And then favorite channels would be listed there if I had any. Moving over, we have our controls and Bluetooth, Amazon Fire Remote, Amazon Fire TV Remote. You can see type, battery is okay, and then version seven, and then a serial number which is blocked off. I can add a new remote if I want. Game controllers, you're gonna have similar. Mobile device, again, similar, and other Bluetooth devices, similar if you wanted to add a mouse or a keyboard. Alex A options, selecting this, well, we have the Alex A app, things to try, favor this device, so that means if you have other devices, this will be the one that listens more often. Communication, configure communication with this device. Wake word, you could change it if you didn't know. You've got Alex A, Amazon, computer, and Echo, which are different ways that you could wake up all of your Alex A devices. Moving on, we have preferences. So here's another place where you can get into the parental controls. Privacy settings, probably should go through here. Device usage data, well you can see by default that's on, but you can turn it off if you wanted to. Collect app usage data, same thing, on or off. Interspace ads, I turned that off as soon as I got here because I don't want that. Data monitoring, notification settings. Again, this is another place that we can get to it. You're gonna notice a lot of redundancies within the user interface. Featured content, allow videos to autoplay and allow audio to autoplay. So when I was going through those ad sections and you started hearing and seeing the the little preview play, that's where you can control that from. Current location, which is blurred out, but that's where you're currently located. Time zone, just like it sounds. Language, you have lots of choices right there. Metric units, so are you Imperial or not? Moving on, we have My, T My Fire TV. We have About. We've got Developer Options. Legal, Sleep, if you wanna set your device to sleep. You can restart your device from here, and then you also have the ability to factory reset the device. Accessibility options, you've got closed captioning, on or off. If you turn them on, notice that you get extra options with a preview on the right. So you've got text, background color, window background, use Amazon Web Services settings, and then reset to default. You'll notice in the corner before I had something saying that I had an update to some of my applications. Voice viewer, this will be spoken feedback, so if I press or hover over a particular option, I will get audio feedback. Here we have our text banner, screen magnifier, high contrast on and off, and then audio description. So this is, again, I'm on this app, this app is. I'm on this, press plus, that, that's what that is. But lots of accessibility options, which is appreciated. Help, as it might sound, helpful videos, quick tips, contact us, or feedback. My account, well, it's gonna have your personal information at the top, but aside from that, you have the ability to sync your content, so that's gonna be able to sync your content across multiple Amazon devices if you have them. And then Prime Video, if you have any subscriptions, this is where you can 
kind of keep track of all of that in one place. And that was our account. And I'm gonna hit home because that covers all the wi windows that we have on the Fire Cube for the Fire TV portion. But last thing, notice right here, settings, there's a little notification icon right here. Now there's actually something there if I select that. Well, here we go. Amazon Music has four updates available. So if I select that, I have four channels that have updates available. I can select update like this, and you'll see right there underneath, that is an update in progress. And once that is done, it will move on to the next one. Lower right hand corner there was showing me I made an update to that. This one's getting updated, and now I just have two left. But coming back to our main screen here, that is everything that you need to know about the navigation and settings for the Fire TV portion of the Amazon Fire Cube. As you saw, user interface is fairly straightforward, especially if you've had something like a Fire Stick before. If you have, that user interface is going to be fairly familiar for you. If you haven't, there you saw, it's fairly straightforward. Yeah, they're gonna push a lot of their Amazon Prime stuff, but you are buying into the Amazon ecosystem. That is the thing with this. It is a Amazon device, so you are getting pushed that type of content. One thing that I like to pay attention to with any electronic device that I bring into my home is actual power usage. And I will say, with the Amazon Fire TV Cube, second gen here, when idling, meaning it's not doing anything, it's not streaming, it might have a wallpaper running in the background, it is going to use 2.4 watts of power. When you trigger Alex A here, it is going to use three watts of power and will actually power down once it's just speaking through the speaker. The initial power on and gather information from the internet and pull it back down is what spikes it up to three watts. When streaming an HD Netflix movie, you are looking at 3.5 watts of power on some of the higher action scenes. Now, compared to a lot of other streaming devices, it's not terrible. It's not the highest, it's also not the lowest, but you have to keep in mind that this is a multi-purpose device. It is not just a streaming box. Slightly higher power usage is perfectly fine. Overall, if you're looking for a singular device that will do two different jobs, stream your stuff and be an Amazon connected smart assistant, this could be the box you're looking for. Realistically, like I said before, if you're watching this in 2022, Amazon's probably gonna have some flash sales to get rid of these when the new version three comes out, which will have fabric around it instead of this shiny plastic, will have an upgraded processor so that it can actually get better quality 4K. But if you're looking at this now and you're looking to save money, like I said, I saw flash sales for this during October's Prime Day for 50% off. So I can only imagine what the actual holiday buying season will look like this year. So if you can live with those caveats and are looking to save a lot of money, the Fire TV Cube here, second gen, is still a very solid device for something that you'll have in your home for years to come. With that being said, I have been Wanderer 001. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the area below. And as always, thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, consider giving it a like as that will help other people find the video as well. If you like what I'm doing here, you can always help fuel the next review by buying me a coffee, link in the description below. Last but not least, if you wanna be notified when I upload a new video, you know what to do.